Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Nest Tree Tribe, our experimental tribe here on the huge beginner's island, where we are gathering up as many of the grasses as we possibly can to try to study up the nest, the new nest building ability that has been added into this version, this beta version of Niche. And so far, it has really been proving to be quite tricky for our little tribe. The nest trees are actually really struggling in having enough nest to be able to have enough children that we can continue on with the generations and continue on with the family line. Right now, a lot of the females that we currently have who are ready to have their babies, such as beautiful Savannah here, are actually getting very old. So this is quite an interesting challenge. I'm definitely struggling to, getting en to get enough nesting material to be able to pump out the babies like we're used to. And I'm actually really loving it because it makes you have to decide a lot more clearly who you're going to invest in the breeding in. So right now, we actually have Savannah heavily pregnant and expecting her second child. She is kind of like our antelope mother. I really love her. I love how the children that they're starting to have are actually looking kind of like antelopes. Little Sila here is quite lovely. She is the daughter of Savannah and Sakar, who is one of our very, very brave creatures. I'm actually in love with him. His colors look so awesome too. And I just, I'm getting such like a Savannah antelope vibe from this group. I really love the way that their ram horns blend in with their manes on a whole bunch of our different creatures. So we're we're gonna have to see where those family genetics go and little Sila as soon as she is old enough is going to be coming over and joining her very brave father Sakar. I'm still stunned I really was so disappointed as you guys know when he was born with double no paw I was like no it's a useless creature but he's really proved himself to be quite brave and quite helpful at trying to gather up that essential nesting material so as soon as his daughter is old enough she's gonna go over and follow her dad around and they're going to search through some of these savannah grassland areas because these creatures are really devoted to the savanna areas versus the forest areas and the swamp areas and the beach areas like some of our past tribes. But uh, savanna... Speaking of Savannah areas, Savannah was a little bit more interested in seeing what Safar's child would be like, perhaps, because he also has what I think is a mark of uh, mm, attraction among this nest tree tribe, the darker manes. I think the, the contrast between dark manes and like really vibrant ram horns is what you would consider very attractive among members of the nest tree tribe. So Savannah is going to see what kind of child she could have with Safar. And let's check what we have in the mutation menu. We have normal eyes and digging paw in the mutation menu right now because both Savannah and Sakar don't, or Safar, excuse me, don't have the best eyes. Safar actually is really good at doing what he does under this tree. As long as the other tribe members are around to help light the area up, it's not an issue that he doesn't have very good eyesight and he just has his cracker jaw so he can constantly crack open all of the nuts that fall down here. But he has really bad eyesight and really bad eyesight is actually something genetically with blind eyes and short sighted eyes that is kind of plaguing a whole bunch of our tribe members. And that is why down here, we have a new nest about to be built with a brother and sister pair, Koana and Tavan. Tavan actually is our healthiest of all of the members. He doesn't have ram horns, so he's not considered one of the most attractive members of the tribe, but he does have normal eyesight. He does have normal blood clotting, and overall, he's pretty healthy. So he is going to become the mate of Koana. She is going to become pregnant and make a nest right down here next to the berry barrier. So those are all of our goals. So far, we've only been attacked by one predator and we found what was it like three different members of the tribe that just wandered on in unfortunately all of them have since passed away but I'm really excited to see where their adventures are going to take them from here so let's go ahead and let the day pass oh and Sakar's mother just passed away and I hate how he's sick I, I wish we could find one of those um one of those curing healing fruits that we could feed to him so that he'd be able to, to live a little bit longer. But, oh no, and it looks like on Onala's father just passed away too, so we're losing the second generation that we had in our tribe. So, yeah, Elv was our very first one, and Step and Isla, their firstborn children, uh, with Elv and some more, have now passed away. So, I'm really sad to see that, but I really do love looking at the family tree. I hope in future, gener like in future versions of the game, they'll keep the family tree so you can like scroll the whole thing. I really want to do a 100 generation challenge once the final game is out. I think that would be amazing. And I want to do like some generational challenge streaming in the future with you guys. That would be really amazing. But anyway, Samor and Elv were our first two 
and I really love seeing how Samor's like stripes and his darker mane have continued on through the family line and will hopefully well and then you have Chila's influence right here when we had like a cheetah come in with our our like antelope tigers that we were trying to make and I just really love seeing that kind of influence. So we're going to see what, um, now that we're on generation four, what generation four is going to start looking like. So Onala is quite interesting. She cannot see very well at all. Very, very short-sighted. However, she does have the ability to do collecting. She is one of our strongest creatures with level three strength and she can fish. So she is intrigued by the sound. Uh, she can smell the berries over here, but she's been intrigued by the sound of the stream and is going to be investigating around the stream. Meanwhile, over here, Rana is really best at cracking i wonder if she might seek out another tree um there is a tree right over here and there is a tree right over here so i wonder i think she might search out this tree because there may be a whole bunch of clamshells that they could have over here so maybe having a female already having claimed this area since savannah has been giving birth in this spot maybe rana will actually start moving away from here and she'll work her way down to the other tree as time goes on how's her eyesight she has normal eyesight and she has really good oh that's right wait she has really 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 good immunity and i wanted to breed her with tavon that's right all right so i think actually i'll send her down here and she might make a nest on the other side of the berry barrier so she'll grab some uh nuts and then we'll start moving her down and she will catch sight of tavon hanging out over here and uh just think that he's quite the handsome fellow because we'll want to see what their babies would look like meanwhile kawana is going to nibble some of these berries and she's going to be kind of glancing to her side at tavon she and tavon will will exchange Change some of the berries of, uh, of friendship and some of the berries of like hey I think I like you and then we'll go ahead and now she will become pregnant and make a nest wonderful so the berry barrier nest has been restored so we'll see how that works out meanwhile over here how far can you move little baby Sila she cannot move very far because she's just itty bitty so she's just gonna scooch over and her father will kind of keep an eye on her from afar unfortunately Sakara cannot collect any of the berries that we have <laughs> maybe Sila will be able to yeah she has a runner's leg so she'll be able to collect berries Savannah is going to step over and she can kick on the tree and help to collect up some of the nuts and Safar will come over here he will collect up some of the nuts and we'll just continually like have a cracker jaw harvesting from this tree because that will really help us out all right so now we have two babies about to be born and I think I definitely want to leave the normal eyesight in to try to keep normal eyes going and let's go ahead and see up here what Safar and Savannah's child would look like so I wonder especially since I have one female over here and one female down here huh I wonder if they might start becoming a little bit more territorial of their nest we'll have to see we'll just watch and see how this tribe plays out panda pattern oh what okay all right and uh, let's see savannah and sakar or safar just had a child that has panda pattern and venomous fangs and she does have ram horns so she's got normal eyesight she's got normal blood clotting she has ram horns she looks like a little squirrel to me for some reason she looks just like a little um like a prove it squirrel uh, or what's it called there's this type of squirrel at the kansas city zoo that i always see that's like really brightly colored and it looks more like a red panda and a squirrel had a baby and that's what she reminds me of so I, i'm gonna name her um squee squee that's ridiculous but i'm gonna name her squee <laughs> I love her. I love her. Okay, so here we have Squee. She's got nimble fingers, so she is like a little squirrel. She can totally hang out over here and work on the tree because she can crack things open with her cracking fingers. I totally didn't notice that we had panda pattern hiding in there. Was that elves influence? I'm pretty sure that was elves influence. All right, so we're gonna have a really interesting little baby. We're going to scooch Savannah uh, over here and she can kick at the tree. And then, can I kick the tree again? No, I have to wait. And we'll move Safar over here. Everybody's just keeping an eye on the babies. And speaking of which, Sila is finally old enough to leave the nest area and to go start wandering with her father. So she can go with her father. She has really, really great movement because she has lean body, runner's leg, and hind leg. And she can go ahead and collect up the berries. Ta-da! There she goes. Now she can, can hang out with good old dad. 
and they can collect up grass and berries together and go on adventures. And I think that this is beautiful. I absolutely love it. Hopefully, Sakara will be able to have a few more children before he passes away. Uh, so Savannah may actually decide to breed with him. Onala, would you be able to breed with him? I mean, maybe. But Onala is not a very healthy creature, if I'm honest. She has hemophilia, short-sighted eyes, blind eyes. Um, she may she may not find a mate of her own. We'll have to see. All right, I'm going to scooch her this way because she's going to work her way over to the bigger creek so that she hears it, even though she can't see it very well. So she's going to work her way over to the bigger creek to be able to go see what she can find. Then down here, another baby! Yay, it's a little girl. And we have Koana and Tavon. So I think I'm going to name this little one who's thankfully pretty healthy. She has one no paw, runner's leg, normal eyesight, normal blood clotting. Um, hmm, Kami? Uh, Komi. Uh, yeah, we'll name her Komi, which I know is one of the names we'll actually randomly generate if I give it time. And then we'll have to see what happens with little Komi here with her stripes and panda pattern. So I'm going to step this way, gather up some food, and then Tavon, are you going to have another baby with Koana? Possibly. Possibly. I do want to get, I feel like getting the antelope sort of look of having, um, the ram horns and speed and digger paw in the family would be really useful. So we'll come over and let him enchant her once more. And when the baby's old enough, we can continue working down here. And then Rana, I think I'm just gonna have to send Rana down here to also consider, oh yes, and there's cracker, there's things she can use her cracker jaw on. So I think she might come down and gather up these clams and that might intrigue Tavon because they have really good genetics to mix together. So as long as that blind eye doesn't pop out, then they should have some pretty interesting genetics. So we'll try letting these two have some babies too. Um, I would love to be able to play it a little bit more story-wise, that each female is kind of territorial of their areas, but that's really difficult to do when we only have a couple nests and you have to repair them all the time. I, I just can't risk it. And besides, we already have little Squee who provides quite a bit of a story from being like a little squirrel. So we're gonna keep an eye on her. There we go. Squee, no! I, no, 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 don't make the nest all broken. Oh gosh, all hands on deck, all hands on deck, everybody. Nesting material, nesting material stat. Oh, thank goodness, there's one nesting material. Oh no, this isn't good when the nesting material runs low. Okay, I need to repair this nest. I'm not gonna break it. Apparently you can actually break the nest if you need to. Um, Hmm, where to move Squee? I'll move her down here. But you, you, you gotta repair the nest or else then like okay there's oh thank goodness three pieces or else then you have to invest so much more of the grass to be able to harvest it oh and uh, you guys have been telling me you can actually cut down the berry bushes in order to gather a lot of nesting material i forgot about that i usually hate to do that but i think we may start clearing like some of the ones we're not actively at right now and they will grow back over time so we'll look into clearing out some of the berry bushes soon and let me grab little comey and she's gonna grow up right down here where hopefully she'll be able to help out with gathering up things from the berry bushes. And then Koana and Tavon, hmm. Actually, I'm really curious to see what Koana and Tavon's child might look like. So I think Koana might take a moment where she's just distracted and eating berries. And then Tavon is quite intrigued because this female is gonna be able to like gather up some of those clams like so. And that's quite interesting. And I, I guess, you know what, Koana was sharing, uh, she saw sharing of this nest when she was younger and that was happening. We were rotating who would have babies in this nest or we were trying to, but we weren't able to get the mates all lined up in time. So I think that Koana would be okay with that. So uh, Rana, let's see, what kind of child do I want you to have? Hmm. Normal eyesight would be great, but I'm pretty sure normal eyesight will be guaranteed here. Um. I would definitely like them to have a child with ram horns, which would be fun. So we might try to encourage the ram horns to come out and I might leave the digging pot in there just as a secondary option. So we're gonna, no, I messed up. I totally messed up. I needed to have Tom on meet with her, not the other way around. Now I have to wait until I can put one of them into the nest. That was my fault, you guys. Fooey, all right. And then let's come on over to Onala who will gather up some of these berries and she's going to slowly work her way over to the stream. I'm going to, I guess there's no birds here actually, so I could go ahead and move Savannah over here to gather up some berries. And then let's go ahead to the next day. 
Little Squee is growing up. Oh my! The grass just grew up, and unfortunately, Sila caught her father's cold. Why, Sakar? <laughs> no, don't get him sick. Oh my goodness. And then Squee actually is also a little hunter. Look at her go. So Squee is able to... Wow, she actually has really good skills. <laughs> she is actually able to gather a lot of the berries, and she is able to do some pretty good attack. And she also has cracking, and she has poison fangs. So she may end up being like our little squirrel line. This is interesting. Here I thought we were going for, for like antelope or something like that, and instead it's going in a totally different direction. All right, we'll gather up those pieces. I want to make sure we collect up uh, some good resources when it comes to all of the nesting materials since that's proving to be so essential. And then Sakar, I'm going to go ahead and let him have another child with uh, Savannah and we'll let her gather up some berries and jump into the nest. And what does she have here? Hmm. I, gotta, I definitely need to put something... I'm going to put in nimble fingers and digging paw, or maybe I'll do digging paw and nimble fingers uh, to try to make sure that whatever child they have born is going to be a healthy one. And then Sila is going to stick around with her dad even though he just gave her his cold and we'll see how that works out. All right, and then down here, who to go into the nest first? Uh, we do have Kalana and we do have Rana. I would really love to see Rana's child have the ability to use cracking too, but we'll have to see. I'm going to go ahead and stick Rana in here, and her first child with Tavan is going to be a little bit of a wild card. Um, Digging Paw, I mean Digging Paw would be nice, Nimble Fingers would be nice, maybe Big Body would be better. They don't really need defense right now though, do they? So let's try this out, let's just see what happens if I leave the... Um, if I leave the digging paw in the mutation menu. And then Kawana is just going to stay there and wait her turn. Komi might start wandering around now that she's old enough to leave the nest. What are her best skills? She can move around at decent speed, but she's not really very skilled otherwise. I've got to get rid of the no paw. I think that's going to be our goal is getting rid of the no paw in our nest tree tribe. And once we manage to achieve that, then we can start thinking about more complicated things. Darn, and Tavon doesn't have enough attack. I was going to have him cut down that berry bush so that we would be able to use that berry bush for nesting material, but unfortunately Tavon does not have enough attack. He actually kind of reminds me of Tarzan for some reason. Probably the name. Probably the name and living in a, a big open island like this. But all right, we've got two babies on the way, so let's go ahead and see what Savannah and Sakar's second child is going to be like. Oh, he's so cute! No! No, Sila, don't be sick. Don't be sick. Stay strong, Sila. Oh my gosh, he's so cute! Look at his little hair! I love the colors he's got! Alright, what do you have, little guy? He's healthy! You guys, they had a healthy baby! I'm so relieved! Okay, he's got nimble fingers so he can help out here around like the, the nest. He can gather up nuts, he can gather up berries. He's also got normal eyesight, he's got normal blood clotting. He just has one no paw and that's like the only thing pulling little cuckoo down. So that's really awesome, Sakar. Uh, I think I'm gonna name him. Um, hmm. Uh, Suku. We'll name him Suku. And I I love him. I don't know why. Just these bright colors and those like very light tan ram horns look so good on this tribe. I'm really really loving it with the defined mane, light ram horn. It's just really quite nice. All right, so that's taking care of this little baby. Let's go see the other little baby. Oh, and it's a cheetah. A little cheetah. Oh my goodness, it's a spiky fanged cheetah. Hello, little one. So we have Lala Is. So little Lala Is has been born. Good news, she is healthy immune wise, immunity wise. She has venomous fangs, uh, or poison fangs, I should say. Um, she has got normal eyesight and she has normal blood clotting. So she is a healthy little one and I don't know. She's got okay collecting and she's going to have some pretty good speed. So nothing new. We didn't mutate in digging paw or nimble fingers. But uh, does she have? She doesn't have no paw. There you go. So that's a good thing. Even if it's runner's leg, at least it's not no paw. So that's definitely something. All right, so last thing we'll do today is probably to get Koana on that nest to be able to have her baby. So we're going to let Tavon go ahead and collect up from here. 
I'm going to scooch Rana, I think, over here so that she can reach more of the, the various bushes. I think Kawana will be kind of surprised to look down and see a baby in the nest that she plans on having her baby in, but it'll be an amused thing for her. And then we'll let Comey go ahead and start wandering around because little Comey is one of our tiger striped wanderers of the savannah. So she'll start wandering around. And then I want to get Sakar. Um, he's getting a little bit older, so I kind of want to make sure he can have one more child. His child looks like like him a lot, Siku. I'm gonna name him Siku. There we go. After Sakar, uh, and then also his name was Cuckoo when he was born, which is kind of adorable now that I think of it, like a cuckoo bird, right? And then his sister, his half sister is Squee, who is actually like part squirrel. That's adorable. All right, and we'll gather up this nut, and we'll have him gather up that nut, and then she can move over here and gather up this nut to let the baby grow up. Wonderful. So should I have them have one more child? I'm taking a risk because Sakara does not have the best genetics, but I think now that he has a grown daughter, I do I do want Sakara's children, to be completely honest. I just love him. I love the heart of the, the whole story that he kind of brought to everything, and I think he and his daughter are on a really wonderful journey to just travel and adventure down anywhere there is a savannah tile. So we'll let them go ahead and wander around. I will have Safar end up having more children though because Squee is definitely our strongest child. So Savannah- Ah, oh, Savannah, no! Savannah's about to die! I didn't realize that! No! What will I do? Sela, Sela, I'm gonna have to bring you back, I guess? Who's who's a good female that I can breed with? Comey? Comey? I think I'm gonna have to bring Comey up, and Comey is going to end up breeding with Safar, because that's just, like, one of the few options that I have available to me. Safar, ah, so Squee was one of the, his only children, but she's really cool. She's our little, like, black and white squirrel of the trees. Oh, this is gonna be tricky. This is so tricky without the nest. I need more nesting material. I need so much more nesting material. Oh, no, thank you. A little more nesting material. Always, always with that. Wow, I'm really, like, just as I think I'm getting my, my feet under myself with all of our nest tree tribe members, then I end up getting swept away because we spent so long trying to build a nest that the tribe is too old and I'm losing the key people who are the key members who were just starting to breed up healthy children. So it's definitely an important lesson to remember. I guess I should just have, if there's enough food, like rapidly hunt down and gather as much of the, as much of the nesting material as possible. And we'll have to see what it's like to take out a berry tree. I'm going to actually have somebody with enough attack take out, uh, I might have Squee come down here and actually take out this berry tree because, uh, or this berry bush, because we're going to see how much nesting material we can get from that. Especially because the berry bushes will grow back over time. Oh, we lost Savannah! Why? Oh, I'm so sad about that. I didn't realize she was so weak. Oh no, and the nest is getting weak. All right, Lala is, you're going to scooch over. And then we're gonna fix the nest, we're gonna step into it, we're gonna grab a berry to eat with Koana. She's going to have another child now. Um, and Koana's child, um, I think that they'll have an okay child. Her last child did have no paw though. So I'm gonna leave the digging and the nimble fingers in to see if we can get rid of the no paw. And then speaking of their last child, Komi is quite the curious little one. I think she's gonna come up here. She found a whole rock, so she's gonna gather up the grasses. Over here, Rana, I think we're going to have, Rana, how much attack do you have? She only has one attack too. So Tavan, I think, is going to gather up that berry, come over, woo Rana once more. And then Rana is going to help out with collecting up those berries. And then up here, oh, I'm so sad. Oh, Siku, is, oh, Siku, he's just a little baby. So he needs, he needs protection. I, I think Sakar is going to come over and watch over his son, maybe. Yeah, I think he will, and we'll let his daughter, Sela, kind of do a little bit more exploring. Sela's got some pretty good genetics. Um, actually, Sela would make a good mate for Safar, believe it or not. So, there, I, 
man, we're gonna have to work really hard to get rid of no paw and the eyesight. So I think that's gonna be our goal with the nest trees first before I really start getting caught up in like, oh, they look like antelope. Oh, they look like little tree squirrels. We're going to have to try to get some of the really not so great genetics out of there that are gonna hold us back, like having the no paw and having the bad eyesight. So we'll work on getting rid of those. I'm going to have Sila go ahead and this will be like her last day of, of youth and freedom. And then we're going to send, I'm gonna send Sakar back over to his son to watch over his son. Cause I, I mean, there's no birds here, but I just hate to like let him be alone. So we're gonna have little Siku stay with his dad. And then over here we have, so far is going to kick down that tree a little bit, squee. Our strong, one of our strongest females is actually going to jump over here. Are these two regrowing nest pieces? <gasps> I need to be having somebody sit here and harvest all of this up, but we're gonna have her knock down this bush because she's going to be thinking about how do you make a nest and wanting to learn about that. So she's gonna tear this bush down. All right, but let's go ahead and end with Kalana having her next child with Tavon, and we'll see what this little one looks like. So the end result is, yes! No, no, Pa! And he's actually Duke here. Uh, and I'm gonna name him Tavon with two A's because his father is about to pass away pretty soon. And this little one looks very much like a, a identical baby from his father. So he's got normal eyesight. Yes, normal blood clotting. Yes, Tavon. I knew those healthy genetics would pass themselves on. And then we've also got nimble fingers and runner's leg. This is one handsome little baby boy we have here. All those beautiful genetics to make a very, very healthy nest tree tribe. So, all right, we're gonna continue. Oh yeah, and Squee just grew up. So maybe that's why she suddenly had the urge to learn how to nest because uh, she's going to be a nester herself pretty soon. So we're going to continue gathering up the uh, nesting material. I think I want to try to get like, I don't know, 50 nesting material. Who knows? Uh, maybe one to 200 food. And then we will gather up the best of who we have in the island and send them on to the next island, send them to the middle island instead of the like uh, gigantic easy beginner island that I accidentally sent them to. And then just to let you guys know, by now, probably the jungle update has come out for Niche. Why am I not playing? Because I'm in Hawaii, actually. In fact, I think today's release is the day before I leave for Hawaii. And I think today or tomorrow is the day when the jungle update is going to be coming out. And I'm so sad about that. But I promise we will be playing with the jungle update as soon as I get back home. So... Whew, this is definitely good that I'm trying out the nest trees though because this nesting thing would have thrown me for such a loop on top of camouflage and the new creatures and the new biomes. It's going to be awesome. But all right guys, I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.